There's a man who's been out sailing in a decade full of dreams. And he takes her to a schooner and he treats her like a queen. There are beads from California with their new stones in their breeze. He has called her from the harbor. He has kissed her with his freedom. He has heard her off to starboard In the breaking and the breathing Of the water waves And she's so busy being free There's a man who's climbed a mountain And he's calling out her name And he hopes her heart can be Three thousand miles He can miss her just the same. He is Mr. In the Forest, while he showed her all the flowers and the branches sang the chorus as he climbed the scaly towers of the forest tree.
Can I swing at the spot? Don't always see the bar. Don't know what you got till it's gone. They play paradise to the parking lot. Took all the trees, put them in a tree museum. I had charged all the people a dollar and a half just to see. together some kind of personal philosophy for myself. I've been combing through all sorts of uh, guru literature and uh, well, I've followed so many paths that I kind of look like a road map, you know? <laughs> Nietzsche, you know, I found that when I, when I liked what he was saying, it was like when I was the loneliest and the most arrogant. So I said, all right, that's a good philosophy for lonely, arrogant people who uh, believe in Superman. But, uh, and I combed through a lot of other sources. And some of them pointed the direction to certain places on the face of the world. Some people pray facing in a certain direction, you know. Their bank. <laughs> anyway, out of it, all of my confusion as to uh, how to accept my good fortune and my bad fortune, came this little tune, it's called Bar and Grill, which is sort of like Mecca or uh, Lutheranism. <laughs> All those things. Three waitresses all wearing black diamond earrings, talking about zombies and singing porcelain. Another 
crazies you get from too much joy. Rented Rolls Royce And you think she knows something By the second we fill You think she's enlightened As she totals your bill You say, show me the way To a bar and grill Some saints in service, they say, humble makes pure. You're hoping it's near folly, cause you're here that way for sure. Just have to laugh, cause it's all so crazy. All her mind's on her boyfriend, and it's over easy. It's just a trick on you, her mirrors and your will. So he asked the truck driver on the way to the till But he's just a slave to bar and grill The guy at the gas pumps, he's got a lot of song He sings Merry Christmas for you, just like that King Cole But lost in the moment, some longing gets filled and you even forget to ask, hey, where's Bar and Grill? Oh, 
honey, who needs a stand? It hurts the tears, and you wind up cracking, and the day goes dismal from breakfast party to the sign of red. What a sorry face you get to wear. I'm gonna tell you again now if you're still listening there. If you're driving into town with a dark cloud above you, that in the number who's bound to love you. If you're lying on the beach with the transistor going, kick off the sand flies, honey, the love's still flowing. It says, forget, but your heart's still smoking.
gotta spread your light like blazes all across the sky. They're gonna aim the hoses on you. Show them you won't expire. Not till you burn up every passion, not even when you die. Come on now, you gotta try. If you're feeling contempt, well then you tell it. If you're tired of the silent night, Jesus, well then you yell it. I slept last night in a good hotel I went shopping today Stop. 
You don't want to hear all my ethnic dulcimer jokes, right? No, you don't. No, you really don't. <laughs> I used to have this whole patter that I give about dulcimers, you know. I used to have. No, I hardly talk at all. Why I hardly talk at all? Or why I abandoned the ethnic dulcimer jokes? Column A or column B? <laughs> well, I was suddenly struck down with lockjaw one day. <laughs> And while at first it seemed to me to be a handicap, I, I suddenly realized that most of the talking that I was doing was pretty useless anyway. So when I recovered from it, I decided to uh, apply that and uh, to hardly speak at all. I would just be ever so quiet. And when I talked, the only thing I would ever talk about was why I never talked. <laughs>
I played in New York last February, I guess it was February or March, um, the president of Atlantic Records sent me a, um, a whole case of wine, sort of on a dare. <laughs> All right, you, you've been bragging, you know. All you Midwesterners bragging about being able to drink a fifth, or, but a case, let's see you do it. <laughs> Well, we were only in town for one day, so I had to give most of it away to this friend of mine who probably could drink a case.
ago, I went to Greece with a friend of mine, and, and uh, when I was over there, I met this wayward American with fiery red hair and a fiery red disposition. And uh, this one day, he and I decided to go to market to pick up some fish and vegetables and oranges and things. I won't tell you the whole grocery list. <laughs> but we started off, it was a walk of about 10 miles, and he had these big, thick Afghani socks that he lent me because the only shoes that I'd come to Mantle equipped with were like real sort of stylish city boots, you know, those, those, those real jazzy ones with the zipper up the inside and the flimsy little heel that if you step on anything uneven, you know, it just snaps off. <laughs> well, that's what happened. First day in Mantle, and they were shot. So I had on these boots of his, which were sort of like little Abner boots. And when I laced them around my ankle, my foot didn't touch anywhere except the bottom, you know. <laughs> there was room in the back and in the front and in the side. And so we started off to market in the cool of the morning, and by the time we got halfway there, the sun had come up, and it was really, really hot, you know. We were going by the ruins of King Festos's palace, so we decided to wander in and sit down and, you know, look at the old marble and, and uh, crumbling art. And uh, while we were sitting there on this rock, a couple of buses pulled in. And all of these people got off and they walked real funny and they looked real funny. They all sort of walked the same and they all sort of looked the same, you know. They walked real stiff over to this row of, of fallen stones and they all sat down. And then, very symmetrically, they all pulled out these field glasses and they raised them all together. <laughs> and suddenly there appeared in the sky this one long flying black speck, you know. Well, my friend Kerry was standing behind this phenomena, leaning on his cane, with his eyes kind of dazzling and his turban kind of blowing in the wind, unfurling. And uh, the speck got nearer and nearer, and all of a sudden he hollered out, It's a magpie! <laughs> and slowly this whole row, all of the field glasses went down. <laughs> All the heads turned around real slowly, and they all had like real beaky looking faces. <laughs> and the woman turned around and she said, It's not a magpie, it's a hooded crow. <laughs> uh, so we got to market, and Carrie bought two pounds of fish because it was on sale. Two pounds of fish, little fishes, is like a lot of fish, especially when you have a cave that has no refrigeration and a lot of flea-bitten cats around that are just drawn to that kind of thing, you know. So like all that night, the cave was invaded by these pesky cats. Before, it, like the Cretans have like a funny thing about cats, I guess it's the same in Turkey too, they have a certain respect for them because they had to eat them once. You know, in some war, everything was under scourge, that's all that, that it came down to. So you see these poor bedraggled cats everywhere with one ear burnt off and the tail that's been, you know, swung off of it and things. And they allow them to live, but they, you know, they don't treat them very hospitably. So they don't treat you too hospitably either. <laughs> and they're real sneaky, you know. But I didn't really mind them ripping off all of that fish because one more day and it really would have been a mess in there.
for affection and respect, a little passion and you want stimulation. Nothing more, that's what I think. But you know I'll try to be there for you when your spirits start to sing.
say I love you, red or black. Dreams and schemes and circus crowds, I hope they play that way. Now old friends are at the street. They shake their heads and they tell me that I've changed. Well, something's lost, but something's gained in the day. Circle game. What about a couple of new tunes? 